<laughs> Creality sends me stuff and doesn't tell me. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Frank, and today we are unboxing and doing a quick overview of the new Creality Ender 3 V3. Oh my god, what happened? This is one of Creality's new machines. It is pretty nice looking from the photos and everything I've seen. Um, there is the, the Ender 3 V3 KE and SE, and they have, um, they're a little bit cheaper. I think they run at about 200 and like 289 respectively, and they're more stripped down versions. The new V3 by itself is actually, let's just say a stripped down K1 or K1 Max. It uses the same print head, has a much beefier frame, and it has that new gray color that, uh, that Creality isn't definitely stealing from Bamboo, but that's neither here nor there. I'm actually kind of excited to check this thing out because I've used the original Ender 3 for a, quite a while. You guys have seen that all over the channel. Um, I did mess around with the V2. I messed around with the Voxel Lab Aquilas, which are basically V2 clones, um, but I haven't used a small Ender 3 in quite a while. I've been using the Elegoos and the Bamboos and whatever. So we're gonna get this open and unbox. I'm gonna open it up and then we'll just get everything on the table, look at it, assemble it, and just kind of give a nice overview on uh, if this is worth the $389 price tag or should you just spend the extra $110 and get a Creality K1 or an extra hundred on top of that and get a Bamboo P1P. We'll figure it out. Gonna be honest, I'm already a fan. Um, this is a very little small footprint, very little small, who am I? Very tiny little printer, not bad. A, a very nice construction quality. If you guys have seen my reviews on the K1 and K1 Max, uh, Creality's build quality lately has been great. I have been a big fan of it. They feel sturdy. Uh, this is the same bed that's actually on my P1P and P1S, but uh, good cable management system. Time will tell how that holds up though, but this is, this is new. This is, I didn't know this was a thing. There's no Z-lead screws. It's belt driven. The entire Z-axis is belt driven by two sideways steppers and, and an entire belt system. Um, that should help with speed a lot for at least going up. But yeah, it is the exact same print head that is on the K1. Well, it's a slightly different, but same um, extruder system, the gear, the nice gear system, the little latch. So it's good that they did that. Everything else looks pretty good on it. This is, I'm really excited to see how this belt system holds up, but uh, there aren't many parts to this. So let's just get this thing built and uh, get to printing. Well, here is the little guy home built that took, I don't know, slowly 15 minutes, maybe 10 if I rushed. Really great build quality. I'm, I'm, I'm liking this. I didn't, wasn't really looking at this whole belt system, but it's, it's a Core XY, but it's not a Core XY. It's a Core XZ or YZ, but this is all one belt driven system, just like the K1s and K1 Maxes. They just turned it and like, it would make more sense if it was on its back, but this is kind of neat. Um, really interesting construction with the head, the way the cable feeds in, you throw in some clips, you attach the Bowden tube, the cable management's really nice. Uh, if this is if this is similar cable tensioning systems and all of that that they're using on the K1s and K1 Maxes, it'll hold up just fine. They give you plenty of slack. Uh, there's um, tension relief. The bed is really nice. I like these textured PEI sheets. I'm glad Creality is finally moving into these. Uh, that's really awesome. Um, there's no way to manually level it, which is great. Looking at you, X4 artillery Y. Anyway, yeah, let's get this thing powered on and we're gonna do some calibration on it and start printing. It says it can print pretty fast. We're gonna find out. Oh yeah, there's a uh, tension relief system for the spool holder. I've never seen this before, but this was definitely an afterthought. It's a little spring system. So I guess the spool doesn't, doesn't weigh down the printer. It's literally a kickstand for the spool holder on the side, just to kind of hold it in place there. That's hilarious, let's print something. Okay, so we're all set up now. Um, it went through its whole self-leveling check. It does the same thing the K1s and the K1 Maxes do. The input shaping, the self-balancing check, all of that. Super easy, don't really have to touch anything. I guess this is the home position of the nozzle head, which isn't bad, but the fact that the spool holder is kind of bolted to the side here, and then the runout sensor is also kind of hidden by the cable management. Um, it is a little weird to feed the filament in, but this is just like a first world problem. If that's one of the only, I can't even call it a negative, the only little quirks of the printer, 
totally fine. And again, if this is the home position of the head, which I, I think it is, it'll be easier to feed and swap the filament in. The, the kickstand on the spool holder is just hilarious, but I think it's, yeah, cause like if I turn it, it's gonna wanna fall over. Okay, we're cool. So let's go ahead and just, let's just send a print and see what it does. Um, I'm not using the little filament that came with it cause that's gross. Um, so I have some Hyper Series Creality PLA here because it's a Creality machine, why not? And we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna full send it. Okay, so we have a few prints off of the V3 and not bad. This thing actually hauls pretty quickly. I was very impressed with its speed. The Benchy came out pretty good, um, especially for that first layer speed that it tried to put out, not bad. This little calibration cube, some um, some round little cylinders or circles, and then a square with some nice ed like good edges on it. And then it, I've never seen a calibration test quite like this, where it, oh wow, I haven't actually looked at this. This got done and I left for the night, but it has these little pegs on it that all the pegs come out if you lift it up and they all have, they all printed at different tolerances to show you if you want to do like a print in place. This is really cool. This is a really cool, um, really nice, really nice overhang. I want to do that. I want to print this on other printers. I've never seen this before. And it gate, it prints out all these little spikes, only minimal stringing. Um, very, yeah, like a little spider web. This came out beautiful. I am very impressed with it so far. Um, I do now have one major complaint with it though. Unfortunately, aside from the weird spool holder, has, as I was talking about, this is the thing, this is the printer's home position. So as the printer comes up for the calibration, it also then comes back down and it, it pulls a bunch of filament up. So as this now lowers back down, the filament here, you can see it right here, just bunches up and it gets tangled up with the cable. It's just not the best design, unfortunately. I feel like there absolutely could have been better ways to do this. I've already looked at, well, can I move the filament runout sensor to the top and then bolt the spool holder up here so it's just a direct feed? I'm sure modifying it like that would be easy, but for a $400 printer, you really shouldn't have to do that. Now, this shouldn't affect anything. As the filament gets fed in and pulled, it should untangle itself, but this just could have been designed a little bit better. However, if it prints beautiful, it's reliable, and it's as good as the K1s and K1 Maxes, you'll get over it pretty quickly, honestly. I don't see an issue with it, um, but it would be cool to see a redesign or a way to move this over. But now, with everything going on, I am going to slice up my own files, probably some flexi rexies because they're just fun to do, and I wanna see just how quick and reliable this is compared to the K1s and the P1Ps and all that. Um, I'm not gonna spend weeks beating this up. This is a general unboxing and overview. You will see this printer in future videos, so keep an eye out for that. But I'm gonna throw some prints at it. I think I'm going to use Orca Slicer if it has a profile for it, because Creality Print is just dog water. Um, and I'll, I'll stand by that, it's an awful program. So hopefully the V3 is added to Orca. And if you, want, you guys wanna learn more about Orca Slicer and how it controls every 3D printer in here, go check that video out, it's up here in the corner. I don't know why I paused right there. Anyway, go check that video out, it'll show you how to link up all your printers. Since this uses the K1 and K1 Max firmware, Creality's new firmware, it is linked up to Creality Cloud, which means I should be able to link it up to Orca and remote control and send things to this printer. So that's really cool that they're going in that path with everything. So uh, yeah, not bad. Let's throw some more prints at it. We'll see how they came out and we'll uh, finish this video. Okay, it's a new day and I am giving uh, James the Hacksmith free advertising. I will expect my check in the mail. Anyway, I threw some prints at this overnight and honestly, they came out exactly how I was expecting. These Rexies are perfect. I do wish I had used a different color because it is hard to evaluate the quality of like white print, but the top layer and bottom layer look great. I was also fire and forgetting. And what I mean by that, that is, that is something I believe every printer on the market right now should be able to, to do. I should be able to remote control this printer or walk in, hit print and walk away. No more watching the first layer, no more worrying about fails. None of that, we're past that. I can remote print to this and it will just print. And it did. The Rexies and tolerances came out perfect. Like I was talking about before, this little, um, the quality test thing came out great. I actually dropped and lost one of the pegs, oh well. The small Rexy came out fine. It, it works. I was expecting it to work because of all of the construction quality based on the K1 and K1 Maxes that this thing has, and it delivered. But with all of that said and done, would I still recommend this to you? You can get the Ender 3 SE for $200, and I think the KE is 280 
So it kind of has a big variance in jump. You can still get a basic-ish Ender 3, which is really cool. I'm still glad that's still on the market for them. And then it goes up, you know, after that. As for the size and the quality and what you're getting, I do think for this price, this is the best this size printer, aside from the K1 that you can get. Uh, it's better than anything Elugu has right now at this size. Uh, it's nothing Solvul's putting out and anything in the bamboo line is gonna be double the price of this though it is gonna be bigger and uh, quicker, but hey. But for how easy it was to set up, the user interface, the connectivity to Creality Print, which I had to use currently, or eventually when Orca has a profile to it, how reliable it was just in these couple of prints. And now, I ha again, I haven't spent weeks beating this up, but it's the same parts as the K1 and the K1 Max is. I think this is gonna deliver soon. Again, the only thing I don't like is just this weird cable management system on the side. I think that could have been solved better, especially for almost $400. But if you are in the market for this size printer and you have the $400 and you don't need something as crazy and fast as the K1 and you wanna save a little bit of money, this isn't bad, and I imagine it'll have its own sales. Usually, knowing Creality's track record, it might drop down to something like 350, which really isn't a bad price for this quality built in build construction. And then you could save 150 bucks and not get the K1. Based on my experiences with other 3D printers, other Creality 3D printers, and everything across the board, I definitely would recommend this to somebody looking for their first 3D printer who doesn't want a built big volume or footprint. It should age pretty well. I don't know if Creality is going to continue to pump out. You know, we're going to have an Ender 3 V4 eventually. So we're going to definitely see how long this thing lasts in terms of being on the market. But I like it so far. If you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns about anything you saw in this video, please drop them down below. I read all of them and I will do my best to respond to as many as possible. And if you found this video helpful or informative, please consider subscribing to the channel. This way you stay up to date on everything I have to offer and all the videos I have coming out, cosplay and 3D printing and all that fun stuff. But that's going to be a wrap for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.